Dear friends, welcome to the second part of the movie where I present the letters written by my mother in the years 1990, 1991 and 1992 to her pen pal in Texas. In this part we are going to read her letters written in the first half of the year 1991, from January and through June, even up to July. But the year 1991 actually began with a tragic event. Um, my grandfather and my mother's father-in-law passed away right before the New Year night, on the New Year Eve, on the 31st of December. So in the first letter my mother is mentioning that event. So let's begin reading the letters. Today is Christmas Eve in our country. This holiday has been officially restored this year. We are more used to New Year holidays. Newspapers inform the readers of the Christmas traditions which are being mostly forgotten here. This year the winter holidays are hard for me. On the New Year Eve my father-in-law died of a stroke. Tomorrow will mark the ninth day. Do you have the tradition to mark the ninth and the fortieth days of somebody's death? We usually have funeral feasts on those days. Many people are suppressed now here, being afraid of changes. My colleagues often say they envy me for my optimism and good humor. That's because I have found an interesting job by theater, and because I'm greeting the democratic changes in our life, and I'm not afraid of them. I don't like women extremists, speaking exclusively of women's rights. At the women's seminar in Alushta, women were discussing the ways of improving the world by means of women organizations. We were invited to propose our own ways, each of us. I propose not to reject men, not to be separate from men in our actions, because in such a one-sided work we are risking of making men our enemies and I can't imagine the worst situation than a civil war between men and women. That would be a catastrophe for mankind. I'm sure it won't happen. Love is greater and stronger than anything else. I don't like extremes. What about homosexualism? Do you approve it? I reject it. It's so unnatural. I've heard in the USA it's not forbidden. In spite of your pessimistic view of America, Many people, if not almost all, believe it's an Earth's paradise. I'd like to see it with my own eyes, to have my own opinion of it. For many years we got only negative information about your country, and now we get only positive and praising news. I think truth is somewhere in between, but I know it theoretically. I don't imagine where that point on the axis is. I know astrology is for fun, but it's hard not to believe in anything. Perhaps you know about our moral crisis. I don't really take it seriously. I only want to check up if Globus predictions will come true. So let's live until March and June and see ourselves. Let's live until the 44th President of the United States and see if a war starts. But it's better for us if those predictions are not true, isn't it? Here Ruslana Pavli is talking about someone called Pavel Globa, an astrologer who is still active in Russia. And about 30 years ago, in 1991, he was also very active, but he was much younger. If you go to Google and search for Pavel Globa, you will find the statements that 85% of his predictions are true. But, uh, for instance, in this article, back in 2009, he predicted that Barack Obama would be killed in 2011. It's 2021 today and he hasn't been killed. And uh, uh, my mother keeps repeating in her letters that the Globa pr is predicting that during the 44th president of the United States, there is going to be a civil war in the United States. Well, 44th president is Barack Obama. But, uh, as we know, there was no civil war during Barack Obama's presidency. So, looking back at what she wrote about Globa and about astrologers, you know, you can draw your own conclusions. Yes, Russian women wish to be slim and trim, but we are undernourished overeaters. 
There are some joggers here. The Chinese say, may we live in exciting times. They are right, it's great. Stagnation is the opposite of it. And it's really dull. But some ancients said, may we not live in the epoch of changes. That's about us as well. Those times are dangerous. I hope we'll change our system. The same as other socialist countries, except Romania. Without blood. Hope gives us strength. You see, the funny side of our education is its lack of practice. I started learning English at the age of 10. I was the best pupil of my group in English at school, at the institute. But I could hardly understand spoken English, because I had never listened to the authentical language. My teachers were all Russians who never heard spoken English. I remember how astonished we were when a Canadian student came to our institute and asked us, do you enjoy English language? We'd never use the word enjoy in the meaning of like or be fond of. And the accent was different from what we were used to listen at our classes. We couldn't understand such a simple phrase. No wonder since we'd been taught the so-called Russian English. But I loved the language and I mastered it with the help of records. My pen pal sent me The Beatles, Elvis Presley, Johnny Holiday, Rolling Stones, etc. Here in Kyiv we still have these records that my mother's pen pals sent her back in 1960s and I want to show you them. This record here. Then there is also her favorite, Elvis Presley, Blue Hawaii. Dear Sir, I most humbly invite you to my school residence. I have a spare lesson and I'm going to show you my classroom. When you enter it, you'll see such an interior. I have small groups of kids, about 12, and the room is narrow. That's why the students' desks are put in such a way. In other classrooms, they are situated in a standard way. My room was supposed to be the International Friendship Club room, but I've made it the Peace Room. I put away a lot of bookcases standing along the wall and my students painted Peace Garden there. I feel relaxed when I look at those flowers and peace doves. In the left bookcase I hold reading materials on peace and some peace lanterns from USA, Canada, Japan and USSR. There are flags of those countries, self-made, on the bookcase. In the other bookcase there are reading materials on environment, the ones you've sent me as well. There are information boards on the wall about peacemakers in Ukraine and some other peace items. I seldom use the blackboard, I prefer to conduct my lessons at the round table. The ceiling is very high. My students joke we can make the second floor. I like it. I like space. Here Ruslana Pavlis suddenly starts talking about malls, shopping malls, because there were some pictures of shopping malls from the United States. And uh, everybody was uh, amazed at that time. They were amazed by the pictures of malls because there was nothing like that in the Soviet Union. The malls are just incredible. Now I understand why people from the USSR sometimes faint in your shops. A friend of mine from Novosibirsk visited Seattle last summer. She said she couldn't help weeping when she was trying on blue jeans in a cabin of a shop. Some people get mad when they return home. Last winter I visited Poland. I was embarrassed with plenty of shops full of goods and no lines there. When I returned home it was like leaping from summer to winter. But there is no place like home. The students on hunger strike demanded democratic changes, not signing the Union Treaty, making up Ukrainian National Army, 
re-electing the Supreme Soviet of the Ukraine, re-electing the former Prime Minister of the Ukraine Vitaly Masol, taking away the property of the Communist Party of the Ukraine. Their demands were partly satisfied in view of the all-Ukrainian political strike which had to be held in support of the students. It was decided to re-elect Masol, that was the only demand that was fulfilled on the whole, and to promise the students to fulfill their demands after some time. As a result, the students stopped their fasting, but many of them were sick, some were in a grave state. There were other people who had joined them later, but those who fasted for a long time, many of them didn't even drink water, were hospitalized. They were the best Ukrainian students, talented and honest, friendly and high-spirited. They fasted because they didn't want to use arms, they preferred to use peaceful methods of struggle for democratic changes. If they were dead, there could happen a civil war, I think. Yes, my mother still works on weekdays. That's a job for pensioners. She just sleeps in an office and reads, has a rest. She's supposed to stand on guard, but everybody understands that she's no guard at all. However, she gets about 100 rubles a month for that. Bogdan dreams of having such a job. He often comes to so-called help her, because there is sauna there and he enjoys sauna. My mother makes wines of apples, plums, cherries, apricots. She puts it into a bottle with some sugar and with the help of a special cork lets its air release. I don't know the details, but the result is good. I've got the Bible from my late brother after his death. I started to read it, but then my son Ivan took it and he reads a lot of it. Different magazines publish parts of the New Testament and of the Old Testament now. I've read some of them with interest. There was also a film about Jesus Christ shown on TV some time ago. But I don't really know what you meant by writing Hey Gorby, let my people go. You ask me where we go? I'm apt to think we go where we are prescribed to go. Gorby, let my people go, wrote Steve Parrish to her. And she wrote him back asking what does that mean? She didn't know what let my people go uh, means. But it's interesting that really this comparison, Gorby let my people go, people who were in slavery, people who were enslaved by the Soviet system. But it's also interesting to follow, trace and follow this story of how miraculously the people of Israel went through the Red Sea and uh, came to the wilderness and were on their way to the promised land and it resembles very much of what happened later to Ukraine. After Ukraine became independent, we became a citizens of a free country, free citizens, no more under Soviet rule, no more under Moscow. But we were very much like the people of Israel as we were complaining about the circumstances of life, difficulties and so on. Well, that's life. After the Red Sea miracle, you need to pass through the wilderness and come to the promised land. So we want to avoid wilderness, but it's impossible. The people of Israel were tested by God for 40 years and looking back, it's 30 years has passed. We still haven't completed our 40 year test and who knows whether 40 years will be enough to test us. Aren't you surprised to see such small sheets of paper used by me for writing the letter? Well, I hate to say it, but shortages have touched even paper. I visited our local supermarket in the morning in order to buy some paper, but there were no copy books or something of the kind, no paper at all, but such small sheets of paper. I bought them, being afraid to have nothing to write on at all. At school I conducted a lesson in the 8th grade, there were only 7 students out of 13 because of the flu, and went to the drugstore to buy medicines for my husband. He has a high temperature and asked me to buy some antibiotics. I was lucky to get erythromycin there. That's the central drugstore. I was going to look for a gift for my mother at the central department store, but it was closed. Shops are usually closed on Sunday, but before such holidays as March the 8th, 
they used to work earlier to sell more goods. Now there are not so much goods for sale, so they are closed. I stood in line and bought 2 kilograms of smoked sausages there. It cost about 15 rubles. I also gave 15 coupons for it. I bought white and brown bread also. Bread is sold without coupons. Medicines and press and mail services also need no coupons. Bread cost less than one ruble. Do you know anything about the free Ukrainian Cossack state? Or of the Ukrainian National Republic? I wish Ukraine become a truly sovereign republic, rich and mighty, equal among equals, in a fraternal union with the other republics. That is the wish of many Ukrainians. I believe the coming referendum will prove it. Dear Steve, hello from Yalta, the best resort town of the Crimea. I arrived here today with a group of tourists. I haven't even dreamed of visiting the Crimea again soon after my October stay in Alushta. It's happened quite unexpectedly. Some days ago our theater director told me he had a possibility to take me and my colleague with a tourist group to Yalta for a week. It costs 280 rubles, not cheap of course, but haven't I deserved it having worked hard in autumn and winter? So I have taken a week's leave, my summer vacation will be shortened for a week consequently, and yesterday at half past three I took a train and came to Yalta, the best in-tourist hotel in the Crimea. It took me 30 hours to get to Simferopol, the capital of the Crimea region, by fast train. At half past 8 a.m. I came there and took an express bus. And in two hours I was in Yalta. The day has been cool, foggy and rainy. But the air is so fresh. The sea is great at any time. The vegetation is rich here. I have already swum in the swimming pool filled with warm sea water. The water being heated up to the temperature of a human body. I also went for a walk to Yalta. I visited some shops and bought some books in English for you. We haven't got such books in Kiev now. There are many foreign tourists here, mainly from Germany. There are many nice things for sale at the hotel, but alas, they are only in hard currency shops. Variety show saloon is also for foreigners because without having hard currency you'll not be allowed to enter it. I hate this kind of discrimination, it's humiliating. I'm having a rest after breakfast in my room which I share with my colleague. There are two beds, two chests of drawers, a table, two armchairs and a chair in it. There is a TV set here as well. There is a shower and a toilet and a closet either. It's still cool but not so foggy as yesterday. No rain at last. Yesterday, while having a walk, we saw some trees in bloom. In Kiev there are no blooming trees now. Our window and balcony face the sea. I can see seagulls flying. Our window faces the building site where Turkish workers are building a new hotel. The Yalta Hotel has been built by Yugoslavian builders, but I can't say I like it too much. I like the hotel in Dubna built by Bulgarians better. The best hotel in which I stayed was in Poland, not so large and modern, but very cozy and comfortable one. What I really enjoy in Yalta is the swimming pool. It's great. There are some bars, restaurants and shops here. We visited two bars yesterday. I think they could be better in such kind of a hotel. Slot machines are here as well. I ignore them. We have our meals in the so-called crystal restaurant. We had eggs and ham, cheese porridge with milk, tea and coffee with buns and butter for breakfast. I'm quite full. 
but I can't say everything is tasty here, though everything is expensive. Our meals cost about 19 rubles a day for every tourist. At home I spend about 8 rubles for my family. I am writing and watching the report of the Ukrainian Supreme Soviet session on TV simultaneously. One of the deputies said that foreigners know little about Ukraine. When he told some foreigners about the 52 million population of our republic, they asked him to repeat the number. They couldn't believe it. They thought Ukraine was not so important. They were also surprised to hear about the great amount of industrial production items of Ukraine, the figures surpassing the leading European countries' production. And he said that in the 20th, in the 1920th, Ukraine collaborated with foreign countries much more than now. That's why lots of foreign businessmen are not aware of the riches of our land and its potency. Perhaps our parliament will improve the situation. I want to tell you about an interesting fact. When I was walking to the beach through an underground passage after having descended there from the Hotel Yalta territory by an elevator, I felt strange. I could bet I had seen it before, but it was impossible. On my way back I recollected where I saw it, in a dream. About half a year ago I saw such a tunnel and elevator in my dream, and even a group of people accompanying me, just as it was today. In my dream all the doors closed and we couldn't get back, but in reality it was not quite so. But the man on the elevator warned us we had only half an hour for a walk, because then all the doors will be locked and we could find ourselves in a trap since it's a closed beach. So my dream was a warning of the worst variant of the development of the situation. The colleague who stays with me came back drunken. She's fallen asleep at once. People are doing silly things. It reminds me of a feast during a plug or the last gulp of air before death. People want to relax to forget about the grave situation in the country. They drink constantly. We watched the cable television. There are films on the cable TV of German and American make which can't be seen on regular TV here. We've seen Melody in Love, just the end of it, and now we are watching The Avenger. The films show people obsessed with low instincts, like animals in the jungle. Our news program announcer has informed today about the growth of the number of rapes in the USA. To my mind, it's no wonder when youth can see such kinds of films constantly. They provoke low desires. People having no sacred feelings, no God in their souls, live in a flat, deserted world, knowing only the law of violence, the right of strength. That's awful. That is not real freedom. It's midnight. It's raining cats and dogs. I adore being at home, feeling cozy in such a weather. I am glad May has come at last, some minutes ago. May is the best month for me, with its holidays. May 1st through 4th are my days off this year, the same as May 9th through 11th. My birthday, the end of a school year and with a carnival of nature. I mean trees and bushes in bloom, spring flowers, spring scents, breezes, birds' songs, all that is dear to any heart, I suppose yours as well. What strikes me indeed is this pluralism of opinions after our anonymity of the long past years. This pluralism's everywhere. Sometimes it's frightening, sometimes it's hard to believe that the people with so antagonistic opinions can live peacefully. I hope and pray there would be no civil war. We must learn to solve our problems peacefully. 
violence is awful in any case. I have read an article about your country in Komsomolskaya Pravda. It reads Americans and Russians are not alike in spite of the popular opinion of our likeness. The author says we can't be similar having had such different histories and circumstances. He says America is not another country but another planet for us. But I believe an inhabitant of another planet couldn't see much difference between Russians and Americans. Aren't our hands, eyes, hearts, minds alike? We are all relatives of Adam and Eve. I watched the May Day demonstrations in Kiev and in Moscow on TV, read some newspapers and started to write letters to my pen pals. My younger son prepared breakfast and brought it to my room. Such a surprise! Nothing special, just fried eggs with smoked sausage and radishes, and tea with chocolates. But I'm not used to such care on his side. He also gave me the text of Jesus Christ Superstar to look through. He can sing almost the whole opera by heart, and accompanies himself playing his guitar. He asked me to translate some words in it. I told him about my visit to the Most Soviet Theater in Moscow, where I watched the Russian version of the rock opera. He is just crazy about such things. By the way, I wanted to buy a t-shirt for Donna in Moscow. I hoped to send it to her for her birthday. But again, there were no t-shirts with Russian symbols. I could only find some t-shirts made by cooperatives with American inscriptions. I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the price. 200 rubles and more. Incredible! Most people here have a monthly salary of about the same sum. I wonder who can buy such things. But footwear is still more expensive, about 600 rubles. Now I take no less than 30 rubles when I go shopping just to buy food for about two days. Economists say the situation will get worse in future. We have more goods and meals in shops now but they are not available for the majority of people because they have become three, five times more expensive. Perhaps you have heard about the mass strikes in Belarus, minor strikes in Russia and Ukraine. People lose patience. They are afraid of famine. Changes will surely come soon. I hope those will be changes for the better. But I am not sure of it. I'm writing you and watching Swan Lake on TV. I'm never tired of it. It's eternal beauty. Music by Tchaikovsky. Choreography by Petty Pass. Our ballet dancers are quite good. Life is short. Enjoy its beauty. Love to you and your family, Ruslana. Practically, I had two birthday parties, at school and at home. I didn't have any party on May 15th, because it was Wednesday, and some of my guests couldn't visit me on that day. There was some other party on that day at school, so I decided to make my party at school on May 17th, after a children's concert dedicated to the end of the school year. I brought some wines and vodka and Pepsi Cola to my room, to my study at school, and my colleague Svetlana helped me to make a lot of sandwiches with sausage and cheese and butter 
and various salads. I also brought an apple pie that I'd cooked the day before and a self-made cake. I invited all those present at the concert, about 15 teachers, our principal among them, to my room, and we had a good time there. My colleagues gave me an amber decoration and Svetlana read her self-made humorous album about me with my photographs and her drawings and text. Everybody enjoyed it. We laughed a lot. Usually it's me who makes such albums for my colleagues' birthday parties. I wasn't sure that anybody could make something like that for me. My fellow teachers gave me lots of flowers. I couldn't take all of them home, but my flat resembles a botanical garden now, because on Saturday I made my birthday party at home and each of my guests gave me a bouquet of flowers, roses, carnations, narcissus, tulips, lilies of the valley and lilacs. There are flowers in all of the rooms, even in the kitchen. I got a scarf, a book in English by Agatha Christie, a bag, two towels and candies from my guests as well. My aunt and uncle gave me 45 rubles. They said that's a premium, a ruble a year. Here guests often give money as a present, because of shortages of goods in shops. Some people brought wines and cakes. I had about 15 guests and there were 20 people at the table. We drank wines, vodka and beer and Pepsi Cola. We ate vegetable salads, sandwiches, smoked fish, fried ducks and chops with smashed potatoes, cakes and apple pies. Then we went for a walk. There is a park on the bank of the Dnieper not far from my house. We had a good time there. I'm enclosing an article about sex in the USSR. I'm the product of my epoch and my country and I am not used to practice any sex safe or unsafe in hotels and on trips. My husband knows me very well, that's why we shouldn't be afraid of AIDS. We should be only afraid of AIDS in hospitals. I have already heard about alcohol and drug use decreasing in America and I respect and highly appreciate Americans for it. Here we can see the opposite tendency. At the beginning of the perestroika, Gorby has declared non-alcoholic way of life for the sake of saving the nation of degradation. But as usual in this country the declaration has been spoiled by overdoing the measures. The best Massandra grapes in the Crimea have been cut out. I couldn't send you the best wines from the Crimea has always been proud of. If I could get it, you'd see why they were awarded first prizes, lots of gold medals at the popular wine contests. Alas, drunkards go on drinking alcohol, but we shall lack the best Massandra wines for a long time. I believe my people will find the way out and we shall live as a free sovereign state. I am writing and watching the news program on TV. They've said there are meat shortages in 94% of Soviet towns, 75% towns have milk shortages and 95% towns have butter shortages. We can't feel that in Kyiv, though sometimes it happens here as well. We have more food and goods in our shops now. Today I have bought 10 electric bulbs at last. I couldn't find them in the course of several recent months. I've also bought some nails and saucepans in the shop situated just in my house, on the ground floor but all the goods have become several times more expensive. The weather is bad, colder than usual, much rain, windy, cloudy. Many people feel depressed and tired. I am also sleepy. 
I'll go on writing tomorrow. And now, good night. Spokojnej noche. Hi, it's 10 p.m. A hard day's night. Today we have had the last bell ceremony at school. Our school graduates, my younger son among them, lined up in the schoolyard. They listened to the speeches of the school principal, of some of their teachers, their first teacher among them. They were also greeted by the kindergarten graduates who enter our school this fall. Then one of the school graduates, a tall boy, carried a little kindergarten girl on his shoulder. The girl was ringing the school bell. Then the school graduates gave bouquets of flowers to the teachers who had taught them and thanked them for their care. I have lots of worries because of my boys, Bogdan being sent to the hospital for the army checkup and Ivan passing his graduation exams. I have no time at all to go to my garden, such a pity. I try to avoid standing in lines when I go shopping, but to say the truth, we have a little less lines now. We have only lines for vodka, chicken, smoked sausage. We have no lines for matches, because there are no matches at all. That's just funny, isn't it? No matches, but lots of spaceships. One paradox of a lot of our economy which is still sick. The local doctors are incapable to cure it. I'd like to know who can cure it without a surgery operation. I'm afraid it's too late now. I've read an article in a local newspaper about the new economic depression approaching the USA and the way out of it with the help of the Soviet market, if it can be opened for the American goods. The author states that will save our economy. Well, just a kind of blood transfusion, as I can see it. On May the 25th, 26th, there was Kiev Day. There were concerts and fairs and fireworks and meetings and art exhibitions in Andreevsky descent. That's an ancient steep street, the key of Montmartre. Pottery makers sold just fresh made pottery and demonstrated their skills for everybody. One could buy masks of Brezhnev, Stalin, of Indian chiefs and other masks which can't be bought in a shop. Young people in Ukrainian national costumes sang and danced and played folk instruments. There were lots of kids among the visitors. I went there myself. I wished to see everything with my own eyes and have my own idea about it. Do you know what my greatest impression of it was? It was my feeling of freedom and hope for the better future. When I was singing Ukrainian folk songs together with lots of people in Kreschatik, the militia were watching us and I saw one of them singing together with us. They are the same Ukrainian people, though in the uniform. We have more goods in shops now. I've even managed to buy the fine postal paper. I hope you like it. My mother has planted lots of tomatoes, peppers and beans at the balcony and it substitutes my garden for me when I want to relax at home. Though I sometimes have a chance to visit it. I'm going to go to my garden tomorrow if it doesn't rain. I'll pick up some flowers there for Ivan. He'll take them to school on Monday because he'll take his exam on that day and students usually bring flowers to teachers who examine them. Is there such a tradition in your country? It's hard to send books by mail now because they take only 150 parcels a day, no more than 3 parcels from a person. So about 50 people can send parcels daily. There are long lines at the post office in the morning. This is the temporary law for senders to the USA and Israel. There are lots of immigrants there from our country. But why do they all need such quantities of books? Perhaps they feel nostalgia. Perhaps books are cheaper here. 
They sent all sorts of books, even old and dirty ones. As for other things, one can send them in the afternoon, but almost everything is prohibited to send in a parcel. Only cheap wooden and plastic souvenirs can be sent. Cassette tapes can be sent, but only of Soviet make. Who needs them there? Playing Soviet cassette tapes in foreign tape recorders damage them. The Ukrainian teacher who was in charge of the exam made a sort of a banquet for the teachers who helped her to conduct the exam. She invited me as well. It was in the neighboring classroom. We ate potatoes and meat stewed in clay pots, that's Ukrainian national food, cakes and vegetables and drank tea. She also gave each of us flowers that had been brought by the graduates. There were lots of flowers in the classroom where the Ukrainian exam was conducted. So my Ivan has to take the last exam, Russian literature, on June the 13th, and on June 14th there will be the graduation party. And then there will be no school children in my family. Perhaps I'll feel older then. Family reading was popular in Russia before the revolution. Now we are short of time for it. To my mind, Russian writers are not the second to American ones. Tolstoy and Dostoevsky are known to be in the first ranks of best writers. They are not only for Russia. They are universal experts and depictors of human spiritual and physical life. And what I especially like in Russian literature, and Ukrainian as well, is its delicate approach to intimate life. I read American novels constantly, just for English language practice. The frankness of description of intimate human relations shocks me sometimes. However, modern Russian writers have started to do the same. I think intimate relations lose their mystery when they are exposed. I had lots of pen pals in the 60s, up to my marriage in 1971. Two in the USA, two in Canada, one in Great Britain, two in France, one in Japan, some in Poland, in Czechoslovakia, in German Democratic Republic, one in Argentina, one in Ceylon, one in Indonesia, two in Greece. I was an active member of our school International Friendship Club. That was my greatest hobby. Here, people who work at the same place have some privileges. That's why we try to stay at the same place. I have worked at school for about 23 years. I had hard times, but I tried to overcome all difficulties and stay at my school. But there happen moments when I'm ready to leave it. That's not because of kids, but because of adults. Administrative command system makes people unbearable sometimes, especially teachers, mostly authorities. Bureaucracy is the same everywhere, but we are perhaps champions in bureaucracy. Russian dinosaurs were surely the same as American ones. Russian bureaucrats are the same as American ones. The essence is the same. It's June 15th, Saturday. This is the description of the graduation party that took place yesterday. It started at 7 p.m. Teachers and parents and relatives of the graduates were sitting in a large assembly hall of the Institute of Foreign Languages. They were beautifully dressed. There were some tables put together in a form of a long table and the state flags on the stage. For the first time, there was no statue of Lenin there. At the table, there were authorities and some guests sitting. The graduates with bouquets in their hands entered the auditorium in pairs, a boy and a girl. They were fashionably dressed, some girls having even very extravagant dresses on. Everybody stood up and greeted them with applause. They sat down and the party began. The school principal opened it. Then everybody stood up to the music of the Soviet and the Ukrainian anthems. 
After that, there were some speeches with congratulations to the graduates and their parents. The first teacher of the graduates said some warm words to them, and then everybody stood up to the music of a song about Lenin, and two graduates, a girl and a boy, took a basket of carnations and left for Kreshatik to put the flowers to the monument to Lenin. Then there was the ceremony of delivering the secondary school certificates to the graduates. A principal assistant called the name of a graduate and he or she climbed the stage, came up to the principal who delivered the certificate and said some greeting words and then came up to another principal assistant who gave a red carnation to the graduate. The flourish was played. Here I think my mother used the wrong word, she said flourish. In Russian it's called tush, so basically it's the melody like It was repeated for 64 times, the number of the graduates. We applauded to each of them. The spectators usually comment on the girls' dresses and hairdos and ask each other about how this or that graduate studied, in a low voice, of course. Then a graduate made a thankful speech and the official part was over. The concert started with the school music ensemble's songs in Russian and Ukrainian. They sang three songs and then the humorous show began. First the graduates, about 20 of them, sang a serious song about leaving school and then started to discuss their future life without their beloved teachers and then one of them said, cheer up, we'll see our teachers on TV because our school is going to become the first TV school in our country since our teachers are the best ones. And then the TV lessons started. They were made in the form of the popular TV programs and they also showed our teachers with their most characteristic phrases, movements and dresses. All the teachers sang humorous songs written by me to the music of our popular songs. But first they showed the pedagogical council, or teachers meeting, in the form of a session of the Soviet parliament. Everyone laughed and applauded to all the teachers. After the party we had to bring some things to school. It was a storm outside, rain, thunder and lightning. I was wet through, but quite happy. Today I'm going to go to my friend's birthday party. She is older than me, 12 years older, but a very nice and interesting woman. She is a polyglot, she knows English, French, German, Polish, Hungarian. I like her very much. Her name is Olga. I wanted to describe my friend Olga's birthday party earlier, but I was tired and sleepy when I had time for writing. I have chosen this paper not to feel so hot. Our meteorologists say some tropical winds have brought this unusual heat to our place. My husband and younger son didn't go to the birthday party because they felt unwell. So I went together with Bogdan. I had a hard time trying to make him put on his decent suit instead of old worn-out jeans and hippie-style black vest. In the end I gained. We gave Olga a book on embroidery in three languages, a box of imported soap, a Ukrainian-style apron and a bouquet of flowers. She is interested in embroidery now. She had no other guests but us, so there were only five persons at the table, including her mother and son. Her mother is 85, having no wrinkles on her face. Her son is 33, still unmarried. He seems to have no interest in marriage at all. He works with kids at a pioneer palace. He teaches them the history of Kiev, often makes excursions for them, and his only passion is his love of his native city. Olga's husband was a cartographer, the same as she was but he died of cancer some years ago. He was 10 years older than her. She is retired now, as most women over 55. There was no alcohol, some salads, smoked and tinned fish, stewed meat with potatoes, strawberries and very strong tea with cakes on the table. We ate and drank lemonade, talked politics, school life, our hobbies, 
We laughed a lot and enjoyed ourselves. Olga has a cat and a dog at home. Her dog was barking all the time and I gave it some pieces of food. Her cat is a coward. It disappeared under the sofa when we entered the room. And when Olga took him out to show how big and beautiful he was, he got frightened and bit her hand. He is very nervous. I thought he was on the verge of a heart attack. There was such a panic in his eyes that I felt pity for him and asked Olga to release him. He is afraid of everybody except her family. Bogdan said he has a soul of a great sinner in him, perhaps. After the meal we were shown Olga's embroidery, about 20 examples, and Sergei's, her son's, pictures of Kiev. He tested us on the subject of recognizing historic buildings. Sometimes we failed. That was an unusual birthday party. We usually have alcohol and more people at them. But I enjoyed it indeed. I don't need alcohol for cheering up. You know already I like everything natural, natural joy either. Then we went back home. She lives in Rosanovka residential district on the left bank of the Dnieper, which is very green and is surrounded by canals. It's a very nice district. And then Jim Baumgartner came to Kyiv with his video camera. He and a company of Americans, they visited my mother's school, they visited our home, so they visited Kyiv at that time. So even though the quality of the videos is pretty poor, but I invite you to have a short look and listen to a few words, see my mother, hear her speak, and how she received guests from America. Чтобы эта песня длилась бесконечно Мне бы жизнь так прошить, чтобы в небо взлететь И полет мой в небо пусть продлится вечно